Hi, this is the first video in a series of videos showing you how to deploy a spine and leaf OSPF based fabric using NetEdit with Aruba CX switches. This is the environment we have here. We have two racks, two switches in each rack using VSX with MLAG attached to the attached host. And then of course the goal of this configuration is to enable communication between the hosts, between the racks in this environment, between the layer 3 uh, OSPF fabric in this environment. Now this is the configuration that we're going to actually deploy. And of course we're going to leverage NetEdit to deploy this configuration. Now there's a number of ways we could deploy NetEdit plans. We could deploy a single plan, but I would suggest breaking this up, starting by uh, deploying a sp simple spine fabric plan. And the goal of this would be, of course, to configure those spine switches so that they're configured off the bat, right? So the spine switches, are, their whole goal, of course, is to pass traffic between the two racks. So let's just get those configured, get those out of the way, and then we can move on. The next plan I su would suggest would be a common configuration among the racks, which would be a leaf VSX configuration. So let's go ahead and get VSX configured on all of our leafs. And then we'd follow that up with a fabric plan for the leaf. So now that VSX is up, let's get that OSPF fabric up. So now let's bring the peering up. Let's get that routing between racks up. up. And then we'd finish it off with a leaf plan for the hosts. And of course, this would be the plan with the VLANs and the active gateway configurations for all the attached hosts in the racks. And once we're done with this configuration, the entire configuration will be done. And these are going to be the four separate videos in this series, and this will be the spine fabric video. Now to start off, the first thing we need to do within the NetEdit environment is we actually need to get our switches into the NetEdit environment. And the way we do it with the Aruba CX switches is we rack and stack them, power them on, get them cabled up, and then using a Bluetooth dongle, we're able to leverage the uh, Aruba CX mobile app and actually get them configured, get them onto the network so that they can be imported into NetEdit. So let's take a look at how that works. So first we'll enable Bluetooth, and then what we'll do is we'll connect to that switch that actually has the Bluetooth dongle in it by its serial number. Once that's connected, we simply open up the Aruba CX app, and we can see the switch there. Now we can put in NetEdit configuration there, but let's go ahead and just get the management uh, configuration in here. So I'm going to give it a host name. This is a spine switch, and I'm going to give it the password. We'll go ahead and assign a management IP address to that. With the net mask, and then of course we'll finish that up with the gateway. Okay, and we're literally done. So just click Next, and now that configuration, once we click Deploy here, will be deployed to the switch, and now, of course, it can be inputted into NetEdit. So let's jump into the NetEdit environment. All the switches have already been imported, but before we actually start the configurations, I want to go into the Change Validation section, and I want to add some Change Validation command scripts, because I know what solution I'm going to be blow uh, throwing out there. I'd like to get some command scripts in there that would help validate the specific uh, solution. And so I've added them already. Show IP OSPF neighbor. Uh, show LACP interface is another good one. Show VSX status. And you can see I've also added ping commands in there because I want to get these hosts online. So I also want to make sure that when I'm done, I can actually ping these hosts and, and reach them. So I've added all those in there. Those will help me determine if the configurations have been valid. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and start a plan. So I'll go into the Devices section, and I'm just going to choose the two spines. And we're going to just edit their running configuration, create a name for them. So this is going to be the, uh, the day one spine plan. Now this is the basic configuration that the CX app, app threw onto the spine switches. I'll start by adding the OSPF configuration and get an area added. 
And then of course with the spines, we gotta bring up the interfaces that are facing all of the leaves. So let's go ahead and start by configuring the first interface. Run the no shutdown command. Throwing jumbo frames on there kind of by default in the data center, they're generally uh, kind of expected in most cases. Uh, descriptions, of course, are always handy too. So I know that the port one on both of these spine switches connect to leaf 1A. So that's going to be a, uh, applied to both of the switches. And then, of course, we'll get the IP address in here. And the IP address will actually vary between the two switches. So this is where we'll use the power of NetEdit to actually apply those various IP addresses. Let's go ahead and get this into OSPF also. And these are point to point links. So let's get that in there. Now we're pretty much done, except we need to modify that IP address. So let's go in there and, and right click on that. I'm sorry, click on that and choose the proper IP address for spine one and spine two and then click apply. And you can see it's changed to a variable now. Now I'm just gonna copy this because the, the other three interfaces literally have this exact same configuration with the few variables that we can just modify. So I'm just going to add the new interface, paste in the previous commands, change those few variables. So port 2 now connects to leaf B, 1B. And then, of course, the IP addresses are going to change for both spine 1 and spine 2 here. Okay, so that's interface number two. Now we're not speeding anything up in these videos. I wanted to go through each of the steps and get, give you guys a good impression of how long this takes. So it's actually really pretty quick. Um, so port three on both of these spine switches goes to leaf 2A. So that changes it for all of them. And then of course, just like we did before, we'll just modify the IP addresses, make sure these are accurate, and then move on to our final port four. It's going to be 2B. And the IP addresses are modified. And that's quite literally the, the entire configuration for the spine, getting this fabric up. So let's click Validate. Make sure that there weren't any errors typed in here and everything looks valid. They conform with the devices. And let's go ahead and, go ahead and deploy this. So the deployment process has already started. We're going to pull up the change validation screen and take a look at some of these screens in the change validation screen to see um, how and if OSPF did get configured. Now, uh, it, it helps to click refresh. And if you look on the left, if there's a green arrow, that means something's changed. So we can see here the interfaces. The four interfaces are now up. They're waiting for a link, though, because there's no link on the other side. And we can see OSPF is up, or at least it's running, but there's no neighbors. And that's expected. So that's going to be expected until we get the leaves configured. But now we know we've got the spine configured. On both spines, we can see the interfaces are up. And we'll just check the other spine for the neighbors. And that should be a no. OK. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and just commit this to the run, uh, startup config. I'm happy with this configuration. And we'll move on to the next plan in the next video.